One of the best tools you can have for understanding what's happening on your websites and on your web server are analytics. Usability.gov defines web analytics as the collection, reporting, and analysis of website data. Usability.gov goes on to talk about measuring content and making decisions from those measurements. This is good advice in general. You shouldn't really be operating a website without understanding its purpose, without really understanding the goals of the site and why you have a website, understanding the objectives which help you figure out what's going to make you reach those goals, and then identifying and creating calls to action that the visitor must complete, and then those should lead to your goals and objectives. So what that means is you shouldn't put a link on your website or a button on your website if it really doesn't lead to the goal of your website. Keep things focused, keep things usable, keep the user focused on what it is you're trying to do and then determine what those key performance indicators are that can tell you whether or not each call to action actually worked, and then determine the targets. And these right here, these are the key elements of what you should be looking for in your analytics to figure out if your website and your server really even makes sense and is doing what you hope it does. You can read more about all of that on this page, but let's jump in and take a quick look at some specific analytics tools. Now, one of the simplest things you can do is just to install the Austats package and get it set up and running on your web server. Austats can be installed pretty easily on CentOS, and let's look at the output of what it does. For this example, I'm going to look at the traffic during peak registration for the fall 2016 semester. So here we see that in August, we had 77,440 unique visitors to the main website. Now, everything I'm about to show you in Austats is based on the web server's own logs. Everything that it was able to figure out about traffic and how people use the website is all based on what was written into the logs, including the user agents, the IP addresses of the clients, and things like the refer tag which gives some insight into the source of the click, including what search terms may have been used. You see here at the top that we list the number of unique visitors, the number of visits, the pages, and the hits. Now the hits include everything that isn't a page, including CSS and other file assets. The next part of an Austats report breaks down all of your traffic on a per day basis. And you can see from this graph the traffic really ramped up on the last few days right before classes started. Austats also gives you some breakdowns about your traffic based on the day of week and even the time of day that your visits have occurred to help you get a better feel of how and when people are using your website. Then there's a breakdown by visitors and top hosts. One of the reasons for all of the unknown traffic here is because that's traffic from the internal network at the college and because that's using private addresses and or private host names, it's really hard for a tool like Austats without some additional customization to really understand where that internal traffic is coming from and what it is. And then you also see that if you have authenticated users on your website, that those can be also determined by Austats. And so the majority of our content is public. And then I'm pretty sure that the next person on the list, whose name I've grayed out a little bit, is one of our lead web developers. Austats also gives all kinds of information about robots and spiders that have visited your site, about visit duration, and about file types. There's really just quite a good bit of information in here about everything. Austats will show your top downloads and your top pages as well. And either of these reports can be drilled down to see the full list. Based on user agent tags, Austats can break down and give some information about operating systems and browsers. 
However, you're reliant on updates to OSTATs to make sure that it can read all of the latest, most recent systems. OSTATs can give some indication of the source of your traffic. However, it can be a little bit confusing sometimes, especially in a case where your own internal naming structures show up as being a separate website when in fact that's traffic from an internal link on the site itself. Again, anything, any information that OSTATs can glean from, from the log files about search terms, it will put in here. And this is a nice thing that Google Analytics can't show you. Google Analytics and some of the other analytics packages rely on a user being able to successfully load a page. This error detail is very good because it'll show things that won't show up in analytics. And that's also true of the file assets, the, the things that we saw back in a previous slide about file assets, that because the analytics codes for third-party systems can't be attached to some of those file assets and they can't be attached to specific errors, can see a little bit more this way. If we dive a little bit closer into our 404 errors, we will see that our most popular unfound file is the WordPress login file, which makes sense because we're not running a WordPress site. However, there are a lot of computers on the internet trying to hack into WordPress, so they come looking for a WordPress login page on just about every website all the time. Now that we've taken a look at OSTATS to see what it provides, Let's take a quick look at Google Analytics to see what it provides in case you're not currently familiar with it. The analytics dashboard shows basic trends, information. It shows how users are acquired is what we're seeing here right now. <clears throat> it's telling us a little bit about referrer traffic. And this is a report I could take a look at, except that I know that our catalog website really isn't supposed to be a source of traffic for our main website. In fact, it's the other way around. Google Analytics will give us information about active users and user retention, tells us when users visit and where they visit from. And I find this to be an ever fascinating balance between desktop and mobile users. We've had, if you count tablets as being mobile users, then almost half of our traffic is from mobile, and it's been that way for quite some time. Of course, analytics wouldn't be useful if it didn't tell you what pages people visited, and it also wouldn't tell us a lot unless it was showing us some of our goals. Of course, we don't have monetized goals here, and clearly it looks like I didn't set up the goals correctly on this particular website because all of these things are definitely happening and yet the conversion rate is zero. You can drill down and find all kinds of information, both in real time and then about your audience, about how your traffic has been acquired, about the behavior of those people once they reach your website. And if you are using e-commerce and have things set up, then you can get a lot more information about conversion rates. Google Analytics is used by many, many organizations and it's one of the most predominant analytics tools out there. However, there are others. And here at Henry Ford, we use Site Improve not only for quality assurance and to make sure that our sites are accessible, but also to set policies about content on our website to make sure that we're doing things in a certain way. And we have purchased analytics for the main website. So let's take a quick peek at some of the things that Site Improve can show us. When I first load it up, I get a dashboard of everything that Site Improve can tell me about the site, including some quality assurance information, accessibility, search engine optimization, responsiveness, and the policies. But what I want to drill down into is analytics. When analytics first loads, it gives us a page very similar to the things that we saw in Google Analytics and in OSTATS, but with a lot more detail drilling down. The feature that I wanted to show off here are the behavior maps. 
We have set up behavior map on over 100 pages on the HFC website, so we can see how users are actually interacting with each page. The heat map shows activity for users, starting here with the desktop view. We're actually able to track where users click all over this page. And you can see that users have clicked randomly in a lot of places that aren't even links. The scroll map is also interesting because it shows just how far users scroll down the page before they stop going. And we'll see that that drops off really quickly after this first news story and the upcoming events. The darker blue at the bottom also shows me that users have started to get used to the fact that we no longer have all of the fat footer links at the bottom of this page and that instead those are all now at the top where we saw the clicks with the heat map earlier. The click map, which I won't go to right now, is very similar to the heat map it's, except that it shows actual links only and not where on the page a user clicked. Let's go back to the heat map and switch to the mobile view. We can see that the mobile view provides a very different story and in fact makes it look like perhaps more students use the website on mobile than on the desktop. That's not a big surprise. As we scroll down the page, I see a lot of clicks on this heading for academic programs, which is not a link, but it makes it clear that that's what people are looking for on this page. We do have a good number of clicks on the links down here in this next section as well. Now the information that I'm showing here is for the entire year. I could actually break this down and look at the patterns before and after the site relaunch to see what exactly has changed. And it would probably give me overall some different results if I narrowed this to only include information gathered since the site redesign. The front page is changing all the time, and I'm sure that has some effect on the heat map, where static elements that don't change are probably showing more clicks than content that changes on a regular basis. As you can see, the topic of analytics is very deep and very complex and could probably be its own class. Hopefully this quick overview gave you some ideas of some of the tools that are out there.